Ah, burning! Right, brake pads today on the drive axle of my lorry. Uh, this is a relatively easy enough job, but they're the ones that usually go wrong with something stupid. Um, they're down to, in fact, let's go check. I'll show you how you check, right? Right, you're going to turn your ignition on and you're just going to flick the button, go down to spanner and screwdriver, start up checks, reducting level, that is your ad blue. Let's go up the way. Wait, it's in, and there you go. So we're going to have to check the lift axle to make sure there's not a crack. This there, front axle seems fine enough, but we have a 20% difference wear on the drive axle. That could be a number of things that are causing that to have a 20% difference in the wear. Uh, it could be a cracked disc, which I can't see until I actually take the wheels off, which I'm really hoping it isn't. It could be a sticky caliper. Uh, but then if it's a sticky caliper, you would feel heat out the wheel, um, which I haven't noticed either. Or it could be a warped disc. Um, so we'll get it changed and we'll take it for a brake test and see if we find it. Or it could just be a really bad set of pads that have just worn uh, really unevenly which would be very lucky in this case but we don't know yet but i'm gonna get my overalls on and i'm gonna start rolling around in the ice here we go these are actually slightly frozen oh it's gonna be oh they're cold but it should take one here this is my <laughs> oh that's cold this suit is really good for working outside in because uh, as you can see, I don't have a garage. And people always say, well, why don't you buy a gar build a garage and build a pit? Well, for a starters, that's a lot of money. It is. I would love one. Um, but that's the main thing. It is a lot of money for me to justify. So I just, oh my God, the center of this is absolutely frozen solid. Jesus. Look, they're frozen. Oh, because they're obviously wet when I put them away. Ah. Uh, um, but... There's also the aspects like I, I might not want to stay in this yard for good. I might want to try and buy somewhere else and then build there. Um, and it is very easy for people to say, oh, why don't you just do this? Well, why don't you just, here's my, my take on it. Why don't you go buy your own truck, start your own business, do all this yourself and you build yourself your yard, a pit and a garage. In the meantime, I'll just wear my suit, which I think these are about, I don't know, 100 quid. This is a good saving, but I didn't even say pay that. This is borrowed. <laughs> so, everything is frozen, so I don't have the compressor with the big gun. So what I'm going to do is break on the breaker bar and then use my uh, battery operated gun to let the wheel nuts off. So, hand brake on and a bit of grit. Oh, that one was already done. <laughs> I don't think it will be that easy. Now I would say each axle should take you about an hour to do in total once you know how to do it correctly. You can do it quicker once you get a bit of practice, but I would always say take an hour and that gives you plenty of time to do the job properly. See, I don't mind working outside when it's dry like this, because I'm not being funny, I'm already in this suit and I'm already starting to get too hot. Ugh. Definitely after doing this job, I think my next investment is going to be in a proper breaker bar because this bar was a bit flimsy and it didn't catch on camera, but it did snap and I had to go get another one. Right, that's how all the wheel nuts cracked off. Let's jack it up and throw these wheels off. Oh. Yeah, don't need a pit. No. Oh. Is he trying to do this one-handed? Oh, a big bobble's hitting off of. Just gonna put the jack on the bottom of the spring there, but I'm trying to get this block underneath just for safety. Remember I said about this jack for a previous video, instead of going up and down and like, see it be like that, and you'd have, here would be all right, but usually you wouldn't get any good clearance. This is so much better. 
Now, once again, it's up to a certain height, I'm going to stick the block under it. If it did fall right now, I mean, obviously an air jack would be a lot more safer. Um, I don't have one, plus the compressor's frozen. But, you only risk of running that, but I've put the tooth behind that lip there. So if the jack was to slip, it's more likely to hopefully ping in that direction and not into me myself. But I will not, I'll kind of have my, my face away from it like that rather than looking directly at it. Under. Hmm. I can't get it where I want to. And get it under the back of the spring. Well, we might not get it. But I don't want to jack it too high either. Because I leave that there, that'll be fine. Because the block's under the back of the spring. Clear some of that ice away. Now, I forgot to mention, I'm obviously taking off the driver's side first because this is the side that is wearing down the most. Um, that way, if I notice anything, we'll do this one first, and that way, if we can see anything like a crack disc that, we can try and order something or organise something straight away rather than doing the good side first, there's nothing wrong with it, then coming to the bad side uh, an hour later and going, all right, we've wasted our time on something we could have looked at. I hate people when you've got Durabrites or painted wheels that just take the wheel nuts off and just let them scatter all inside Now, the front wheels are chalked up, right? Just gonna let the handbrake off. Let the handbrake off, we do this, but always make sure, uh, because, yes, I've got it blocked up. You need to chalk it, because if that was to roll forward, fall off there and you were underneath it, you're dead. You don't want that. Now, there doesn't appear to be any cracks. These are all heat cracks, that's, that's standard, right? But there's nothing from there right over the shoulder. But they are getting a bit thin. What I'm thinking is, I realistically actually would like to change the discs on this now, but I don't have time. I would need help to do it because I, I don't have the correct experience to do it from start to finish. I would need to give somebody to give me a hand with that. Um, so I'm going to put the disc, uh, the pads on the now. I'm then going to order and arrange because I've got something coming uh, on the 30th of this month. So the lorry could go off the road for a week and get them, get someone put into a garage and get someone to fit new discs to it. Before, I would like to catch the problem before it becomes a problem. Now, this is how easy this is to do. Just give that a wee clean off a wire brush, tap that pin out from underneath. Might need to give it a wee twist. But once you've managed to get that out, get a punch or a screwdriver, hammer that out. And that will allow you to remove the plate, which will give you full access to your brake pads. That is how easy it is. Right, that's us now into the, the brake pads themselves. So, when you get a new set of brake pads, you get a wee fitment that goes in on the end of your socket. It's an alloy fitment, and it is to wind off the caliper, right? I'll show you how to do that. But there you have a tendency to snap for kind of safety reasons instead of you snapping the pin in the caliper. So, as long as you're cautious enough, what you can do is, I'll put a link in the description. You can get one of these. Now, this is a, an impact socket. Now, don't use an impact gun. Just get your ratchet. And it just, it's quite bad because when you get them, you only get two of them and then you can snap them very easily on the caliper and then you're stuck. But if you get one of them, you're all right. But still be careful that you don't break the teeth. You come to the back of the caliper, 
just above the chamber and it will be on the bottom on the other side pull that cap off see in there that is what you wind off so just look there you go and that's how you wind the caliper off now you'll see when i turn the when i turn this off it's going to wind back the caliper now it there you go all right we're gonna stay there we need to wind this all the way back though to get our new brake pads in. Right, okay, what you want to do next is you want to clean a wire brush inside. Get all that crap out of there. I do have a better wire brush than this, but I don't know where I've while I sat it down. Let's get nice, all that brake dust out of there. Get a good clean up. Let's try these out. This one's breaking a bit easier. I ah, see. Just the heat has just destroyed them. And that is why we need to wipe the caliper completely out so we can get the new pads in. Now, how you adjust them up, turn your, your ratchet the other way, you tighten that, so that's, that, that's fully tight, right? And I was always told two clicks off, so one, two. That's two clicks, now that should move, there you go. Let's fit all the plating on, new pin, put the cap back on there, and we should all be good. Now, always remember to use a brake lubricant paste. I don't like to use copper slip itself, something proper and correct. A wee bit fiddly putting this all back together. You do get a new pin and clip. Uh, you might need to jam a screwdriver punch in the bottom just to wedge it and line it up, but it's relatively easy to find. Now, do you also remember what I said? I'm going to stick the wee alloy adjuster in there in case I ever need it at the side of the road and put the rubber grommet back on. Sorry. Now, all that's left for me to do is put the wheels back on, torque them back up, and then go do the other side. So I don't really need to show you that you'll know how to do that yourself already. But that's how you change the set of pads. Now, they're the same in the back and the same in the front. It's the same idea. Well, as always, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something. Remember, like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, because you can't do that, but give us a thumbs up. Again, flat out, flat broke. Whoosh.